YouTube, what's going on? Solution for the Solution Kicks. Back with another video. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, tap, smack, bang, throw somebody at that notification button so you know when I'm dropping another one of these things. And YouTube can be a part of the Four Kicks Brigade. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I was not paying attention, everyone. I hit uh, 1,500 subscribers a couple other days. Shout out to uh, my, my dude, Andy, for... Um, informed me of that the other day on uh, Instagram. I was not paying attention, y'all. I don't really look at the numbers like that all the time. I'm kind of more in tune with your comments, believe it or not. I like to read your comments and interact with you in the comment section down there. So today's episode, this is episode two. So we're on episode two of our uh, discussion type thing that I'm starting off here is, uh, this is one that that probably is a this one's probably one that you might want to pay attention to all right because it's affecting the culture and that is the whole bot thing okay bots aren't new bots have been around for years everyone they've been around for years they did a little research on um when we really started seeing the whole bot talk show up on um on youtube and the sneaker culture it's been around for years believe it or not and it's basically been a way where uh, your bigger name sneaker YouTubers and more so the resellers have been able to get some of these more limited releases. Or if you're a reseller, you want to get multiple pairs of a uh, somewhat limited, like, you know, I call it uh, a uh, limited general release. If you, you want to make some money off those. Um, yeah, this is what they use. And for some resellers who sell general releases as well, they use bots to ensure they secure their pairs on these different websites. So what has happened is that your, your foot lockers, your foot actions, not foot action, but champs and, um, yeah, foot locker, foot action, champ, foot locker, foot action and champs are basically doing the consolidated, uh, email thing where if the address is linked to the same home, they just merge in accounts. Some people aren't happy about that. Is it? Well, I just use my, my wife or my daughter's name or whoever that's in the home so I can get the other pairs. Um, not quite sure how that's working out. Um, talks with, uh, I forgot her name. She works at a Foot Locker and I think she did a video on that. So go check out her channel. And I believe she gets in depth on how all of that's working. How do I feel about bots? Um, I, I, I'm kind of on the fence with it. And after doing my research, initially I said, I don't like them, all right? But it goes against what I've already said about the counterculture. When um, <clears throat> the brands and the stores have made items limited and somewhat out of reach of uh, the, you know, the everyday buyer, if you will, enthusiast or whatever, that you create a counter market for it. So if you have these um, limited sneakers, such as your, your Yeezys, and uh, your ultra limited Jordans, and um, you know you want that 175, you want that uh, 200, that 225, that 250. There's going to be a counter market for that, or some system in play where the playing field gets somewhat even. And first, you know you got the uh, the whole fakes and all that stuff out there to ensure that people get a pair, if you will, <laughs> take it for what it's worth. Then you have the uh the reseller market then you have the bot market if you will that triggers the reseller market so basically a bot is a program that you can purchase or an app if you will that you can purchase and um basically you build your profile for it and you attach it to all your your different um sneaker uh, websites and accounts and stuff like that and uh it, it basically just starts generating hits on the website to hopefully that's not bothering you guys. It, it just starts generating hits, multiple hits, until you get a slot to purchase your size. And um, basically it's the add to cart part it's to ensure the sneaker gets added to the cart and you can uh, start your uh, purchasing process. So in a, a simpler sense, it's kind of like, you've been to an amusement park and you have like the, the quick pass where it jumps you ahead of everybody in line so you can get to all the rides a little quicker and you pay a little bit more for that. That's basically the way I see it. Um, do I think it's fair? No. And at the same time, I'm kind of like, hey, it, it is what it is because I hate saying that. It's, it's basically you created the situation for it. Um, sneaker brands and stores 
you create the situation for this via greed. So when you start limiting these sneakers and you don't have any mechanisms in place to prevent people from buying multiple pairs, once you see someone buy more than two pairs, it should kind of flip your antenna up and going, why do you need three pairs of the same size shoe? Okay, just perhaps you have uh, your pair and your son and your, your younger son, you all wear the same size shoe. Okay, three pairs, got it, okay? But when you start seeing five and six and 10 pairs, you already know this person's selling the shoe, all right? You already know they're selling the shoe. The stores don't care because they've already made a profit. The brands somewhat don't care because they've already made a profit. Only time the brands really care is when counterfeiting comes into play. And even still, I kind of feel like um, the whole counterfeit market kind of triggers the next release of a shoe. You know, it kind of helps fuel it. So it, it, it it's like a, a very uh, toxic relationship, if you will, between the brand and these unauthorized factories that are making almost dirt on the exact copies of the shoe. But back to the bots. So you have like this, this easy pass where you can just blow through the, the lines or you're, if you live in a place where you have toll roads and you have the easy pass, um, you know, little device in your car or sticker and it scans, you just, you don't have to stop and pay, you just go straight through. All right, everyone's still paying, but it speeds up the process to ensure that your purchase is secured. Now, how much do these things cost? It could, back in the day, it was like $50, right? From the research that I went through and looked at. And now because sneakers are such, such, such uh, high commodities, you can make a whole lot of money from it. These um, bots are now up to 150 to ensure certain slots. Now, the other part I found out too, is that you might pay upwards to $100 to get access to the app. Then they tack on another piece of it where it basically takes you up to reseller prices. So, um, you know, hypothetically speaking, you you wanted a, you know, these Raptors right here, they retail to $200. So you paid um, 50 to $75 for the bot or whatever it was, then, um, you know, $100, you secured your purchase. And now that you're paying the $200, but they're gonna tack on probably 50 to $75 on top of that as a, hey, because we ensured you got that pair, hey, come on up off it, all right? It's kind of like, being a reseller who runs around your city and buys up all the pairs because they won raffles at different stores and they run around getting the shoes and they get them for you because you like to be lazy and sit at home and you don't care about the retail price. You just want to ensure that you get your shoe and your reseller drops them off for you. They meet you someplace. So you're paying for the convenience fee, if you will. Um, does that make the, uh, the game unfair? Yeah, it, it does. It does when you're allowed to um, basically just jump line, if you will. That's exactly what it's doing. You're, you're jumping line. Um, a, they, they do a shock drop, and within five minutes, y'all, boom, sneakers gone, gone. A, I, I've tried to purchase off the sneakers app for limited sneakers um, about three times. Three times where I actually tried. I was up. I was ready. Information was in there and click, wait, 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 nothing. You know, then it comes back, nothing. The closest thing I got was, it was like in my cart or something like that. Then the, you know, the purchase didn't go through because the shoe wasn't available anymore. So yeah, the bots are eating up everything. And um, the most recent release of a sneaker where everyone's really just had been like in an uproar were the um, Jordan 1's um, LA New York, no, excuse me, LA Chicago, where you can, you know, it comes out in the Laker colorway, then you can, you know, wipe the the paint off and it goes to the, you know, the, the uh, Chicago colorway. Everyone wanted those, but you also had the other version that are in stores that were somewhat um, a limited general release. They're still out there. I have a pair. So to ensure, this goes back to my first episode, the quick strike thing. They quick struck these to ensure they still made money. Then they made the uh, LA Chicago version limited. So that, that's the one everyone wanted and it's out of there. If you're savvy enough, you probably can get a pair. I just got a lead on a pair. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get them or not because um, 
it was it was just too much hassle with everyone and basically uh the other sneaker that kind of exposed the whole bot game where people just like forget it it's, it's terrible out here i'm just gonna get a fake pair where are the travis scott's one the travis scott one was the one that exposed everybody for having suspect sneakers and the whole bot game now people are just like i really want that sneaker i don't care if they're real or not i have heard that people don't care people have purchased um suspect sneakers then came back and said they got legit ones and they're doing videos to try to clear everything up um and it's multiple sneaker youtubers that are caught up in that situation right now where they're basically trying to clear some things up i personally don't care i, I don't care that's your money but as long as you don't try to sell them and say they legit but back to the bot thing uh, what's your take on it do you feel like is is unfair um to the casual sneaker buyer do you think there should be some kind of um algorithm put into the the sneakers app which is the, the main culprit the sneaker app gets all the dope retro jays there should be something on there to prevent that um i don't buy yeezys but i understand people hammer that site for the yeezys and stuff like that but do you feel like these um these brands should uh, excuse me these stores these apps should put some kind of mechanism in place to ensure that the casual buyer isn't just being pushed out the way for somebody with a bot and they get the shoe but i probably don't think they're going to do anything because they they're basically like we're making money i don't care how you get the shoe as long as the payment is processed but thanks for checking in for episode two all right and um be sure to, to to comment and the you know drop down in the comments tell me about it what do you think about these bots give your take on it have you ever used a bot before how'd you feel about it did it work for you do you say it was a waste of time let me know let's talk about it. you know how i am i always respond to your comments everyone i pride myself on that um more videos coming up soon check it out y'all who do you have in this series all right are you taking the raptors or are you going for golden state People are telling me they want the Raptors to win because they're sick of seeing Golden State in it. And um, they feel like Kawhi deserves another title. They're also fans of um, Kyrie, uh, excuse me, Kyle Lowry. Um, here's my take on it, okay? As we get into the sports thing, y'all know I always close it out on something non-sneaker related. I don't think the Raptors have enough firepower to deal with a Golden State team that's on point. Last night, I feel like everything went right for the Raptors. I'm not going to take anything from them. Everything went right for them. They got the fouls called for them. Um, Golden State made, you know, all the, the mistakes that they shouldn't have made. People being wide open. Um, I can't believe people still leaving Danny Green wide open like that. You know, he's a spot shooter. If he's got a clean look, he's going to hit it pretty much. Um, if you got a, a Steph Curry that's off, um, a, a Durant that's injured, a rusty Boogie Collins, a um, somewhat average Draymond plan, uh, a decent clay, and um, you saw Iguodala, he may be hurt again. Um, you know, Looney doing okay, uh, Livingston, all these guys, if they, they aren't on their game, all right, that's right for them to lose. And that happened last night, all right? They basically put themselves in a position to uh, give the Raptors a chance to beat them. And the, the Raptors had, you know, double digit leads several times on them where the, the Warriors, uh, take, they took it all the way down to four or five at one point. I can't remember them ever really leading for any good amount in the game. But yeah, there were a lot of mistakes created. Well, you know, the created by the Warriors to allow the Raptors with that good team, not a great team, but a, a good enough team that could essentially steal this series if Golden State doesn't make the adjustments. Now, the one thing I did notice, you know how Golden State is in the third quarter. They come out that locker room and it's like they figure things out. They start slamming you. And by the fourth quarter come around, if you aren't tall enough to handle and they don't make mistakes, you're done, all right? They're done. It's like having a, uh, a high-powered offense in football where they're just bombing your way, bombing your way, and hitting you for five and 10 yard runs every so often. Then the fourth quarter comes around and there's eight minutes left in the game and he just handed off the whole time and worked the clock. That's essentially what Golden State does to you or they just start bombing away again, all right, to really put you away. But I think Golden State's depth may prevail in this series. I'm not sure. There's a lot of ifs. Um, last night I, I was 
just amazed to see Boogie come out there and play. But um, a very rusty Boogie. You saw him make you know some mistakes and stuff like that in there. Just from not being on the court in a game type situation. Will we see Kevin Durant? If he becomes critical, Kevin Durant may play. All right? Because Boogie went from questionable to playing. All right? And I can't remember KD's status right now. But if it looks like we have no choice but to put him out there because uh, the Steph, Clay, Draymond, and Boogie um, lineup isn't working the way we wanted to, you might see five All-Stars on the court just to give themselves a chance to win another title. Um, I do like parity in uh, professional sports and college sports. I like to see different teams come up. So Toronto is a, a good story considering I live in San Antonio and y'all know what happened with him and the Spurs and uh, now he's playing with it. And a lot of people are still upset but a lot of San Antonio fans are still cheering for Kawhi. So they're now Toronto fans. And that, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. That shows the um, the maturation of a fan base right there. So I'm out of here. Remember, comment, like, subscribe, tap, smack, you know, throw somebody at the notification button so you know when I'm dropping another one of these videos. And you too can be a part of the Four Kicks Brigade. And once again, make sure you chop it up down there in the comment box. All right, boom. The solution.